Hello there, this is Ajit Avlaka, and in today's video, we are talking about powerful self-reflective questions that will help you and your clients to unlock your future potential. Now, before we get into this video, I want you to consistently unlock your future potential, which is why if you haven't yet hit the red subscribe button, you wanna go hit that red subscribe button so we can send you videos every single week like we do here on Evercoach. Now, today's video is very important. The reason why it's so important is the questions I'm gonna share with you are slightly uncomfortable. They are not normally used in a first time coaching setting, but can be insanely powerful if you use them repeatedly as a self-reflective exercise for yourself or for your clients. The reason why these questions are so very powerful is because when you ask these questions, it gets your clients or yourself to reflect really on where you are in your journey and where would you like to go. It helps you get really real with yourself and get into the uncomfortable, unsure place so you can find the comfortable, certain place about really knowing yourself and finding your true purpose, your true calling, and finding real alignment in your life as you go further after you've answered these questions for yourself. Now let's get into the first question. The first question I heard at a conference, I was attending this event where there are other transformative leaders, other coaches that were coming in a closed setting to really discuss ideas on how to further humanity better, how to make better contributions to be able to help humanity more. And this was one of the ice-breaking exercises, but the question was so powerful, I had to share with you. The question is, what is it that I don't want you to know about me? The reason why this question is so powerful is because it gets you to really inquire as to what is it that you're hiding? What is it that you're hiding from the world outside? What is it that you're hiding probably from your colleagues, from your friends, even your life partners? You see, what is it that I don't want you to know about me reveals that part of you that is scared, that is uncertain, that is unsure, that is trying to fit the norms and not really share what's really happening for you. When you are willing to share what is it that you don't want to share about yourself with the rest of the world, when you get comfortable with finding those out first and then being able to share it, you'll find that you have unlocked a certain level of courage in your life. You will find that now you're getting more and more comfortable with things that otherwise were unknown, unseen, maybe uncomfortable to you. Sharing something that otherwise may feel a little scary to share with someone allows you to be able to get more honest with yourself and get more honest with how you show up in the world. So I really invite you to reflect today on what is it that you don't want me to know about you? Because when you really share that, when you really share that with yourself and then you share it with our community here, you will find that you have found a new power and comfort with who you are as a person. You can also ask this question in a business setting or a life coaching setting where you are discussing ideas of what is it that your clients need courage around? What is it that they maybe are unwilling to share? This could be a great opening question when you are in the third or fourth coaching session with your client where you can openly ask them, what is it that you don't want me as your coach to not know about you? This will help your client really unravel or reflect on what is it that they're still hiding? Why is it that they're still hiding that? The second question leans a little bit on the first question to find even more truths about you and your clients. The second question is, what are the five uncomfortable but honest truths about yourself? The reason why I ask for five uncomfortable but honest truths is because very often there are areas in life that we struggle with, but because we have to put a game face on, because we are expected to be a certain way, we don't share them, not even with ourselves. We don't even recognize that it is happening for us. And because we don't recognize that it is happening for us, very often they pile up as subconscious challenges that we struggle with and we can never really face with. Which is why I invite you to write down what are the five honest truths, honest truths that you may be struggling with, maybe challenged with, maybe truths that you're fighting to, to get past. Right now, as I'm speaking with you, I am struggling with trying to figure out this new house that we just got. We got this new house and this contractor's always at the house, which is why you see my video production quality has gone a little bit down. And I struggle with it. And I honestly want to find a way how to not struggle with it. I have not been able to manage my thinking around it, my emotions around it. And that is why I got an office and now I work out of an office. 
but I know I'm escaping a truth and I need to work on that truth. I wanted to share this honest truth with you because it's liberating for me. And I think it is liberating for you if you shared your honest truth of what you may be challenged with right now. Very often we are told as coaches and trainers and educators that we can't really share our struggles, that if we are vulnerable, if we are honest, they will not respect us. What I have found more and more of is the more honest I am with you, it gives you permission to be honest with me. And at the end of it, what we are doing here as coaches is build a more honest society so we can tackle the challenges that we need to tackle, overcome the situations that we want to overcome with, create even better society around us than we have today. And that is why I am coming out to you right now being honest. I invite you to be honest with yourself. I invite you to write down your five honest truths that you're struggling with. Even if you don't wish to share it here today, I invite you to at least do the exercise. I invite you to invite your clients to do the exercise so they can identify what are they struggling with really. And then we can come up with a plan. With that awareness, we can come up with ideas and strategies and thinking behind how we can really get past those challenges and create an even better version, more honest version of ourselves. The third question brings attention towards your need for acceptance from others. You see, very often we want others to accept us, others to recognize us, recognize our work, recognize our talent, recognize our contribution to society. But very often we don't actually write down what is it that you want people to really recognize you for? What is it that you really want people to appreciate you for? What is it that you want people to know you for? The invitation to this question is so we can direct our energy towards what really matters. Seeking acceptance is a human thing. There is nothing wrong with that. The challenge becomes when we compare our recognition to somebody else's, when we are undirected in what is the recognition that we even seek. Is it that we want those likes or do we want to feel that we contributed to a person? Does one person's testimony at a time gives us tremendous amount of joy or satisfaction or we listen to somebody's testimony and immediately look at somebody else to hope that they also accept us? What is it that you as a coach really want to be recognized for? What is it that your clients really want to be recognized for? Just saying I want to be recognized makes it undirected and makes it harder for us to see the recognition when it does come through. But when we invite ourselves to really ask, what is it that I want to be known for? What is it that I want to be recognized for? It directs our energy and now we can see better. We can see better when we are truly recognized for it, when we are appreciated for it. You know you are recognized and appreciated for your talents once you start to realize what is it that you really wanted to be recognized for. So I invite you to write down what is it that you want to be recognized for? What are the talents you want to be appreciated for? What's the contribution you want to make in the society? And then I want you to ask the same question to your clients so they don't fall for the trap of I want to be recognized and never feel satisfied with the recognition that they may already be getting. Once we direct their focus and energy, you will find that your clients will be able to also feel the recognition with a lot more power because their focus and attention towards the recognition that they truly seek, the acceptance that they truly want. They won't chase the social media likes, they might chase what is truly important to them. And that is powerful. The next question is something that comes from a movie. Yes, I know, I fell for a movie question. This question was asked by George Clooney's character in Up in the Air. <laughs> this movie is about two employees that go around firing people. And George Clooney, in one of the firing activities, asks this question that I think is powerful and reflective, even if you're not really getting fired. So here's the question for you. How much did they pay you the first time to trade in your dreams? Ooh, that's a powerful question. How much did they pay you the first time to trade in your dreams. The reason why this question is so very important is because very often we don't live our dreams. We don't live our purpose. We don't live in alignment with who we truly are. We don't live in the larger context of what we really want to live as human beings because we have a sense of security with that job that pays us really beautifully. And because of that security, that safety, that comfort that that job and that income gives us, we tend to push away our dreams. We tend to push away our true purpose. We tend to push away what we really, really want to do with our lives. And that can be dangerous in the long term. Now, I in no way am suggesting that you should quit your job right now because that's what you got to do. 
I think that is a decision you need to make intellectually for yourself, spiritually for yourself. But what I do want to ask you is how much did they pay you first time to give up on your dreams? And ask that question to your clients. Of course, not in a business or an executive coaching setting, but in a life coaching setting. If your clients feel like they're not pursuing their purpose, if they're not pursuing their alignment, maybe you want to ask them that question. Maybe you want to ask them, how much does that security really mean to you? That security of that comfortable paycheck. And is the purpose, your alignment, your passion, your future more important to you? And how much do you really need to manage yourself before you can give the comfort of that job, that paycheck? And really invite yourself into your future and your career that you always wanted to do, your purpose that you always wanted to live. The reason why these four questions are so very important and I think invite courage in your life is because they help you reflect on what truly is. Get comfortable with things that you may not be comfortable with. Get comfortable with some of the honest truths that you may have been hiding and present it to yourself or to your coach or to your client in a way where they can finally be honest and vulnerable and present to what's the truth about their life. You see, one of the greatest things that I have found for somebody is to help them find their true purpose, to help them find their true alignment. If a client of mine can find purpose in their life, if they can be aligned to what they really want to create in the world, usually it creates an unstoppable force in them. They are spiritually aligned. They are psychologically aligned, they move their body and become biologically aligned just because they're so passionate and so driven to create what they always wanted to create, to be aligned with the purpose and the greater calling that they always wanted to be aligned with. And that is why these questions are so very important. Once your client finds their purpose, once your client finds their meaning, once your client really starts to believe that they can create whatever they want to because they've gotten to that level of honesty with themselves, you'll find that your client becomes a force that is unstoppable. Your client will become a source of energy for the rest of the world. And that is what we are here to do as coaches. At least that's what I believe that we are here to do as coaches. And that is why I invite you to firstly ask these questions to yourself. Reflect on them. See what comes up for you. And once that has happened, invite your clients into these questions and see what happens for them. You will see true change happen for yourself first and for your clients. Now, I know you must have enjoyed these questions and you're ready to go reflect on them. But before you do that, hit that like button, share it with somebody that you think can use these questions in their coaching practice or generally as people. Go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me which question really stuck out for you, if any of them, and which one got you really uncomfortable. And how did you resolve by being honest? I'd love to hear your stories with these questions. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ajit Navalakar and you're watching this on Evercoach.